July 2012, Liz and I went to Indonesia, which are those green islands just north of Australia. After flying literally halfway around the world, we arrived in Manado, Sulawesi. There, we took a boat ride to Banakan Island, which is famous for its scuba diving. This was our room. In the morning after breakfast, we would walk on the boats, ride around these beautiful islands to two different spots for a one hour dive at each site. There were also options for afternoon and night dives. In total, we each did 17 dives over the course of seven days. Ellie, who's pictured here, was our dive master, so he dove with us on every single dive and kind of showed us around. All around Binakan Island, there's sort of like a shelf that uh, goes well off the coast of the, the island and it drops off and this is where we did the diving and there would just be these walls or a cliff of reef. The amount of fish and coral we saw these walls at this drop off was just mind boggling. And really this video doesn't really do it justice but at least gives you an idea. This area of Indonesia is essentially where the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean meet and it's really well known for its high diversity of marine life. For our afternoon dive, we saw this mandarin fish, which hide in the coral only come out in the late afternoon, early evening. In case you were wondering, all these photos and video were taken by us with a camera that is waterproof down to 40 feet. We went deeper than that on most dives, but for three of them we went shallower so we could take our camera. This is just one type of box fish that we saw. This picture and the next one are clams. And this was a trumpet fish. We saw some amazing coral, like this stuff that's like broccoli. After one morning of diving, due to low tide, we had to anchor the boat out away from the resort and wade in. That is when we saw this banded sea snake, which are extremely venomous, but not aggressive and apparently unable to bite people due to their small mouths. Not only was that wild, but then we had to walk through this mangrove forest. With it being low tide, all the roots were exposed, creating this surreal and dangerous scene if you weren't careful where you walked. For our last morning binocan, we woke up early and did a dawn dive, which was really beautiful. And then after that, we borrowed Ellie's bike and took a little ride around the island. That ended our time in Binakan, which is on the left side of the map here. Next we went to Limbe, which is the eastern part of this map, and it's another island where we did a different kind of diving. This is where we stayed in Limbe. Notice the black volcanic sand, which plays a major role in why this is a different kind of diving. We lounged around our first afternoon there. Our dive schedule is exactly the same as in Bunakan. 
We dove in the mile and a half wide strait that separated the mainland from the island. Sometimes we dove near these white walled cliffs, sometimes near people's homes. Sometimes we docked at these floating shacks. Sometimes we dove in these little coves. The type of diving you do at Limbe is known as muck diving. And as you can see, there's no coral at all. Um, in this picture, there certainly was some coral, but not much. A lot of it was just this black sand, black volcanic sand where there's all kinds of crazy creatures hiding, hiding for protection and also hiding to ambush our next meal. Some of the things we saw were a flying gnard or a mothfish, scorpionfish, a ribbon eel, a snake eel, a type of starfish, a banded boxer shrimp, a white-eyed moray eel, false fire urchin, Liz described this muck diving as treasure hunting because you really had to search to find some of these creatures. We saw a ton of lionfish, which are incredibly beautiful, but incredibly poisonous. One of the most amazing things we saw was this reef octopus. It was about the size of a basketball. Notice it pulsating white as it was feeling threatened. What you are looking at here is a cuttlefish. It's about the size of my hand. This is really ridiculous how it goes from a spiky brown to a smooth black look and basically it kind of takes off like a spaceship. Nudie branches are essentially sea slugs and there's tons of different kinds of them. Um, some of them are small like this, some are actually kind of large. That's a large one with Liz's finger there and we just saw a whole bunch of them in Limbe and also a bunch in Binakin. Not only are some of these animals hidden, but some are very well camouflaged. They're out in the open, but still difficult to see. So we're calling this segment, Where's the Sea Creature? Circled is a cockatoo wasp fish. The arrow is pointing to its head. It may look like a leaf on the ocean floor. Lurking in the next few photos and video are scorpion fish. Twice, the guy pointed them out to me, and it took me a few seconds to understand what I was even looking at. The barbed dorsal fin is poisonous. This is a file fish. This amazingly well camouflaged fish is known as a ghost pipe fish. This one's not a fish, but it's actually some very small kind of translucent shrimp. These vertical fish are razor fish. A type of hermit crab. flounder. Lastly, on this piece of coral are two shrimp. Since we didn't have the camera on every dive, there were tons of cool critters that we saw but don't have photos of. These first two photos of the strange frogfish are photos that we took, and then the rest in this section are other people's photos but of creatures that we saw. These are some other types of frogfish that walk strangely across the ocean floor.
This is Liz's most favorite thing that we saw underwater. It's a flamboyant cuttlefish, and they're actually pretty small. Blue ring octopus is incredibly poisonous and about the length of your thumb. This is a school of juvenile red ember fish and amongst the false fire urchin. Barracuda. Crocodile fish is about two, three feet long. Longhorned cowfish. Bobtail squid, it was about the size of your pinky nail. White mouth moray eel. Napoleon wrasse. These two pictures are two different types of sea cucumbers. It's a spider crab, fire dart fish, a type of pipe fish, bubble coral and shrimp, a pygmy seahorse. This is the Ambon scorpion fish, which is pretty rare. That's also one. Napoleon snake eel, blue spotted stingray, clown triggerfish. Red breasted wrasse, thorny oyster, leaf fish, crescent wrasse, partridge tune or a snail. We saw a large one of those. This is a slipping lobster and a worm sea cucumber. For our last afternoon in Sulawesi, we took a very bumpy boat ride to the mainland and we went to Tancoco Nature Preserve with the hopes of seeing two different types of primates that live there. So after hiking through the jungle, um, and actually running through the jungle at some points, we saw the first ones, which are called black macaque. And northern Sulawesi is actually the only place in the world you can find the black macaque. There was a family of about 20 of them that were all around us. We watched them for about 15, 20 minutes. Man, look at the teeth on that sucker. Next, we hiked off to find another primate. This other primate is not a monkey. It's known as a tarsier and it lives in the trunks of these trees. It's world's, one of the world's smallest primates. And we saw a family of five or six. Um, they're actually the only primates in the world that are completely carnivores. And you're gonna see this guy go after this insect. Most of the insects, although they do eat some birds and snakes. As you can probably tell from their large eyes, they are nocturnal. Um, so they only come out late afternoon, early evening, and then they head up into the trees to do their hunting. Next morning we caught a flight to Sumatra to begin the second half of our trip. In between Liz and I is Eddie, who is our guide for our trip through Sumatra. On the far left is Jaya, who is our driver for most of the trip. On our way to our first stop, we went through a lot of villages but a lot of palm tree plantations and also rubber tree plantations which is what you're looking at here a lot of people produce both those things to make money and this is a rubber actually running out of the tree into a little bucket so our first stop is a place known as Tangahan which involves some down and up of stairs and river crossing that we weren't really expecting to get out into the jungle where we were staying the name of our accommodation was actually the jungle lodge and this video, next couple video and pictures are all around there. We really were in the jungle. It's a pretty amazing spot. The main reason people go to Tangahan is a chance to see Sumatran elephants. These elephants obviously aren't wild. They're used a few times a week to do tourist treks. But the other days, a military unit uses them to patrol the jungle for illegal activities. During our trek, we saw some monkeys which are known as long tail macaque. We wound up seeing a ton of these monkeys during the rest of our trip. After trekking for about 45 minutes, we helped wash and feed the elephants. <laughs> I got one. On our hike back to the lodge, we saw some more long tail macaque, which were still novelty to us at the time. Then we also saw some Thomas leaf monkeys, which are native to only this part of Sumatra. 
Apparently these monkeys don't normally let humans get so close to them, but as you can see, we were actually, well Liz was actually quite close to them. At one point Eddie yelled at Liz, get back, they're wild! We finished up our hike with a shower and a waterfall. Next morning we took a hike to an area known as Butterfly Beach, swam in the water a little bit, and then saw a bunch of butterflies. Upon leaving Tangahan, we avoided all the steps and the sketchy river crossing for the equally as sketchy suspension bridge crossing, but we made it alright. Our next stop was Bukit Lawang, which means the door to the hills, and this is where we did our overnight jungle trek. Sumatra and Borneo are the only two places in the world where you can still see orangutans in the wild, and that's our goal for coming to Bukit Lawang. Orangutans are the only great apes that are found outside of Africa, and they are the world's largest tree-dwelling animal. Not only are there orangutans in this national park, there are six other types of primates. It's the only place in the world where orangutans, elephants, rhinoceroses, and tigers can be seen in one place. Also found there are sun bears, cobras, pythons, boars, monitors, the world's largest flower, and many other animals simply a ridiculously diverse place. We didn't get to see most of those things unfortunately, but it was still amazing to see the jungle and eight different orangutans gracefully tumble through the trees. So after several hours of hiking, we came out to the river and our campsite. Not long after a short dip in the river, we were talking by the tent. Suddenly, Eddie yells, there's a huge monitor. Down by the river coming ashore is a gigantic lizard. They're related to Komodo dragon. This one must have been six or seven feet long. Notice how long its tongue is. Not long after that, Danny, in the center, finished and served us our best meal of the entire trip. It consisted of sweet and sour chicken, tofu tempeh, vegetable curry, lots of rice, and pineapple. The next morning, we woke up surrounded by long-tailed macaque. I'll give you one guess what they were looking for. That's right, they knew about Danny's fabulous cooking and they wanted his food. Several times we had to chase them off. After all that excitement, we were off. We didn't hike though. We river tubed out. Three tubes tied together for four people. It was no lazy river. We got really wet, but it was lots of fun. Oh, big rock! <laughs> Our next stop is Anna's who was an Indonesian woman who we went and stayed with her and her family for a day. We had to walk through these rice paddies back off the main road for a while. These rice paddies were actually have been there for a couple hundred years and were built by the Dutch. This is Anna and two of her four children. Her husband was out of town while we were there. And this is her rice paddy and her house, which is fairly big by Indonesian standards. So the plan is that Eddie will teach us how to plant rice. <laughs> First you clean up the old rice plants and jam them down into the mud. Next you get the rice that's been growing for a couple of days off to the side and they actually push it down into the mud. Here is our crop. Here is our farm. We planted several rows in about the two hours that we worked. Apparently Westerners usually come and only work for about 10 minutes, get a picture, and they're done. So they were happy with two hours of work. In about three months, our rice will hopefully look like this. And this was a, a woman nearby who was actually harvesting her rice. Along the road, on the way to our next stop, we, are, we saw our sixth type of primate, pigtailed macaque, otherwise known as baboons. 
Verstage is a large city at the foot of two volcanoes. Notice the one in the background. We were there to climb one of them. Sabiak is the one we climbed. And as you can see, when we got above Treeline, it was quite windy. It last erupted roughly 400 years ago, um, but still has a lot of gas spewing out of it, which you can see right here. This gas sounded like a jet plane, and we got much closer than we were expecting to get to it. It reeked of sulfur, and it was definitely a kind of a freaky experience. We really felt like we were on some other planet or watching some video of like the beginning of the Earth. We hiked down a different way than we climbed up. We hiked down two hours into that valley you see below. Part of that was through a bamboo forest, and at the bottom we swam in volcanic hot springs. Our last stop was Lake Toba, which is the world's largest crater lake. Due to being at a high elevation, we saw many coffee fields, which is a major part of the economy there. That's the coffee bean, and that's them drying. So we actually ferried across the lake to a large island in the middle of the lake to stay, and this area is very well known for the Batak culture. They are the native Indonesian people, and well known for several things, including their houses, artwork, music and dance. Because of their integrity, the Bataks are known to other Indonesians as being strong and straight. They are Christians despite living in the world's largest Muslim country. However, before they converted about 100 years ago, they were infamous for their cannibalism, which was their form of capital punishment for major crimes. Despite all that, it was lunchtime and we were hungry. We had fresh grilled lake fish, which many people raise in these floating hatcheries. The rest of the afternoon, we lounged by and swam in Lake Toba. That evening, we were serenaded by a local band for the end of our trip.